Hey everyone, uh, thanks for coming back. So today we have something different. Today we have uh, the Arc Lab 5200 electronic shuttle. Uh, this is going to be painted up for my buddy Rob, who has uh, his own channel, uh, Cast Forward Fishing, and uh, he's bought himself the new Garmin Panoptics Live Scope. So he asked me to paint this up for him. I'm super excited to see the videos he makes with this stuff. Um, Arc Labs is uh, it's a local company. Uh, I'll include their website below. I'll also include a link over to uh, Rob's YouTube channel. And I guess first things first, let's get this painted. He's kind of giving me free reign on what I'm going to paint. Uh, yeah, let's let's get it uh, taken apart and prepped. Okay, next thing to get this thing ready for paint is we're going to have to just scuff it up a little bit. This is just some um, fine sandpaper and when you have something nice and fancy, the first thing you want to do, sand it. As I've mentioned before, this is going to help, uh, help that base coat stick a little bit better. Okay, just so I can fast forward and help kind of speed things along here. You can kind of see how, I'm not going too crazy, I'm just putting a little scuff in there. And I'll uh, come back when all the pieces have that scuff. Okay, hang on. Okay, next order of business. <clears throat> Grease and wax remover. Yeah, look at that. It's a good thing we're doing this step. Okay, <clears throat> so now we have all of our pieces degreased, cleaned up, sanded. Um, I went over it a couple of times, just I was getting so much black off that, yeah, it, it needed it. It's important to put extra effort into this step, go until there's no more uh, grease or anything coming off, because this is what your paint's going to stick to. I've decided I'm going to try to give this like a marble look, like a white marble. Yeah, that's, that's about as much as I can explain right now. And I think we'll like paint like a, a fake like leather handle on top. He wants his logo on there, so we'll do that. And we'll start with Wicked White. Alright, I'm not going to put you through that. You'll come back, this will be all white, we'll go from there. Alright, and we are back. So, wait about a day. The white's nice and hard now. So if any make any mistakes, any more mishaps, whatever else it might be, I'm pretty confident that we can use some cleaner and a Q-tip and just wipe it right off and keep on going. So... What I've decided, we're going to make it kind of like a marbly stone kind of look. And in order to do that, uh, I've made some stencils. So what we have here is just this random shape that I've cut out of uh, some poster board based on nothing at all. I shouldn't say not based on anything. I uh, looked at a few pictures of, of marble down at Home Depot, 
looked at a couple of tile samples uh, for unrelated projects. And uh, yeah, I just kind of noticed a few of the random shapes. Uh, all the marble seems to have kind of like these really jagged, uneven edges. And they all kind of work in like a vein, almost like uh, the grain of wood. There's always a pattern kind of in that stone as well. So I, I cut this out. I cut out four of its friends. Again, just all based on nothing. Okay, so what we're going to do, we have metallic silver, jacquard, metallic silver. Turn the PSI down, I'm about, it looks like 10. Well, because this is going to be kind of our focal point. Let's just put the, put the stencil down, aiming again, mostly on the stencil, allow it to overspray. Who don't mind? I fast forwarded a little bit, but basically the principle was the same. Just random shapes kind of all over the place with that gray or metallic silver, I should say. And now, here, this is this one, and I kind of wrapped it around the ends. All right. Now we have my little concoction here of golden titanium white and jacquard transparent black so the mixture that I did on this filled it up to about here with the golden white and then I literally used like half of a dab like I'll show you Yeah, bring it close, tip it so that you see paint come to the end, dab in a little stick, that's how much black I used in that much of white, and it gives you a gray. So we're looking for something that's comparable to that silver. But a little more subdued. Again, have the PSI super low, maybe like close to five now. I have the little cap off. Again, we'll just give it a little clean. You're gonna notice pretty quick. Let's go try and do a fine detail. Now the tricky thing is that I don't have a fine detail airbrush. I, mean, I think this is like a 0.5 needle definitely not a not a fine so I'm gonna get nice and close keep it moving and the goal is to basically just do little tiny sharp movements the entire way
Okay, so after many clogged airbrushes and many bad words, uh, I think we have enough of the little detailing going in through here, a little bit of veining. Now we're going to go on to the next step, which is going to be adding uh, just some contrast color. So I'm actually going to be using just like a, a flat black. It is going to be acrylic paint, pretty much the same paint that comes for the airbrush, but uh, we're going to use these little Molotov uh, pens. So we're going to use a gold or black and a gold. Uh, let me just clean up the airbrush and then we'll get back into this. Now Rob does a lot of ice fishing so we want something that kind of stands out a little bit from from the ice but doesn't take too much eye away from actually what's on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with the veining throughout the marble. Bring that a little bit closer. Oh, that's cool, you can see a bit like how that silver's metallic's shining through. So we're just going to continue on with the veining. If you have a shaky hand, that's even better. And we're just going to kind of make our own lines. We're going to tie it into some of the darker areas here. And there's, again, there's, there's no real pattern. You just kind of start at one end and keep going through. So to make things easy to start with, let's just go right here. Next up, we're going to use the gold, metallic gold, and we're going to kind of go over the area again, but we're just going to keep it nice and close to the black lines. We're not going to follow the black lines. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of keep it close. Uh, again, in nature, I think it's uh, was like quartz or something, a little bit darker stone. Usually it hangs out with gold in rocks. So we'll keep it nice and close to the gold, we'll overlap it, and just do a very fine amount throughout. These I think, if you're 
watching this and you're like a geologist or something, I'm wrong, just, I don't know, correct me. Okay, I think the next step is going to be to do the handle. I have an idea, but I'll have to be right back. <laughs> 